What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is December 8th of 2021. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are and in today's video we're going to be diving into the broad macro topic of Bitcoin versus altcoins and which part of the market you should most likely be exposed to. Now of course you got to make these decisions for yourself guys but I want to propose the narrative today here as to why I'm genuinely more bullish on altcoins even with the recent correction. If you ask most of the crowd or most of the market here today the sentiment is overwhelmingly bearish. People think that you know it's time to run for the hills, that everything's just generally gonna go down. But I wanna propose a bit of a contrarian view like we commonly do here on the channel. What if we saw something a bit different? What if instead of seeing Bitcoin going down in price and dragging the entire market down even worse, like we usually do, we may be starting to see a trend change in the market. We might start to see that there's still a risk on narrative in crypto, but that the liquidity instead of just flowing out of the crypto market into dollar pairs is going to be flowing from Bitcoin to a variety of other cryptocurrencies, predominantly Ethereum. It may provide a very simple 2x opportunity within the cycle against Bitcoin, but along with that would possibly provide us a whole range of higher level multiple opportunities in the broader altcoin space. We're going to be talking about that as we go through the video. And we've also got a sponsored portion for our sponsor Energy, the blockchain that we've talked about a lot here on the channel. And it's got some exciting news in regards to Energy Swap and its DeFi ecosystem as well as NFTs and its recent referral program. So stay tuned. You guys won't want to miss it. All right. Let's go ahead and dive into the conversation. Now, as you all know, if you've been watching the past few previous videos, we talked about this idea that price could start to pull back even further, which we saw during the correction. And we've even proposed the potential idea that we could start to see a broader downturn here back towards the May to July, September, or sorry, excuse me, the May to July support range back here uh, from 2021, around $30,000. Could be a little bit higher, could be a little bit lower, but this is generally the range we're thinking of somewhere in this ballpark park. Now, this is playing into a much broader trend here, right? If we take a look here to the weekly, we talked about how the similarities of price action here may be playing out similar to what we saw back here during the first post-correction, or the first correction we saw post the first rally off the lows exiting out of the bear market, right? So you can see here very similar correlations between rallies. And I think that we've got these long drawn out consolidation periods where we're again, kind of putting ourselves back into place as most of these rallies are much too fast, right? Because of the credit and leverage in the system. Now, most people would think, as we've seen throughout history, and I think it's a completely rational assumption to make, but a lot of people assume that when Bitcoin is gonna go down in price, that the entire market has to come down with it, right? We do generally see this sometimes. We see when Bitcoin pulls back that the kind of risk on assets like altcoins generally pull back harsher than Bitcoin. But I wanna go ahead and showcase some really interesting metrics that may start to poke at that general trend where we might see something that doesn't generally happen throughout history. If you've been taking a look at the Ethereum USD chart, what you find is a really interesting trend. Ethereum looks relatively bullish here. In fact, it's been killing it over the last year, two years, really ever since we flipped bullish on it back around $80 to $90 to $100 per coin, right? Back in 2019 in the fall, around September. And still to this day, Ethereum is showcasing immense strength. Over the past four weeks, it's held the $4,000 big even level range here in price, which was previous resistance back here in the past. Unlike Bitcoin here, which is clearly facing resistance around the same range here, and it looks like it's got the foundation here to continue pulling back. Now, trust me, as much as the next guy, I don't wanna see Bitcoin per se pulling back in price, right? It'd be awesome to see Bitcoin continuing higher, but to be completely fair with you guys, this is not looking incredibly bullish. It certainly isn't looking like this, right? We can dive here to the daily chart if you guys wanna see really more in a shorter time frame, right? There are only really a couple trading days where you're down on your money with Ethereum, right? Less than a fraction of a percentage of its entire price history, right? And so far, it's one of the few cryptos here that's actually shown the resilience to hold the support range. Now, this is a little bit puzzling. We would usually expect Ethereum to be getting hit worse than Bitcoin, right? Going down even further in percentage losses. But so far, buyers have come in quite starkly and price is holding up really nice. And you can see that here in the Wix, right? We had a very clear uh, sell-off here 
with uh, uh, with Ethereum's price, buyers came in here dramatically quick and drove prices back up to around $4,300. And we can see this materialize within the BTC uh, or the ETH BTC ratio, all right? Last two weeks, we saw a 16% leap up, most of it coming through on that one trading day, right? 6.5% move when we had the sell off. Can you guys recall a time, like candidly, for those of you who have been here for a long time in the market or those of you who have been looking through the charts, right? Can you remember a time where Ethereum did this when Bitcoin pulled back 10, 15, 20%? I can't recall a time, right? Now, what does this tell us here, right? Because even though ETH, yes, it did pull back in dollar terms, I'm not trying to say it wasn't pulling back, for sure it did, right? But we've recovered those losses quite quickly. And it's been holding up against, again, that general resistance range, making it new support. What does this tell us? Well, it tells us that when the liquidity was starting to circulate out of Bitcoin, right, out of the market, and we saw a general pullback, people used that opportunity to reallocate into Ethereum. And we can see that in the spike of liquidity here. We're looking at Bittrex here, right, which is not a very liquid exchange. So we can take a look at ETHBTC on Binance, right? Take a look at this. Major breakout in volume here. Over 200,000 ETH traded. Major, major move here, right? Now, we're seeing this big breakout in volume here on the positive side. The market's pulling back. It's something you usually don't see. There's a lot of things, though, that have gotten me in the context as to why it may be a good time to focus on ETH and why ETH has really got the steam to still move higher. For example, right now, all coins, uh, the altcoin uh, season index here that we take a look at here on the channel, which takes a look at the performance of altcoins over the last 90 days and sees whether or not they're outpacing Bitcoin. We can see here that around a third of the top plays here, or 30%, are outpacing Bitcoin, right? So it's relatively low right now. Now, a lot of people would say that, oh, we wanna wait till you know you get down in this range, or no, we wanna get in when it's altcoin season, right? First off, you do not wanna like really go long in the altcoin season, right? For example, this was only up here during March, right? That's when the euphoria kicks in and you should start to look taking profits to some degree, uh, or at least be more risk off. And down here, yes, it is generally good to wait for a revisit down here. But it generally tends to be, as we zoom out here, that any time we go down to the depths here, we usually will see a revisit up to the highs of the altcoin season range before prices come back down into this range, right? We can see this throughout many times in history, right? There's only a few exceptions here, right back here in November 2018. Really, we didn't live down in this range for very long and then leapt, leapt up here in March 2019. We can also see here again, we revisit down to the low range, come to the high range, right? Come back down here, we rally up to the highs. So generally, and we've had a sharp revisit down here on six, the lowest level we had since September 2019, right? When altcoins flip bullish, it's been holding up quite nicely, right? It's flagging here. And now we might be setting up the higher foundation to start moving up higher in prices, to start consuming more dominance in the market. And I think as much as I think there's a lot of opportunities out there in the altcoin space, Ethereum is going to be the clear winner. I think Ethereum is by far going to lead this rally here in the sense of market dominance gain, right? Now, we can see here again, we've had our general altcoin dominance chart here, this idea that we were gonna continue to rally since back in October, after we revisited this previous resistance range that's now turned into new support. But I wanna tell you guys, we've made a recent update to the altcoin dominance chart, right? This is one of the new projections here that we actually sometime in Q1 could see altcoin dominance go up towards around 69 to 70%, breaking through the previous all-time highs a little bit earlier than what we had thought previously, where we thought we'd come up here maybe at 64%, pull back. Now, why am I so confident now that we're gonna see an additional 10% rally in altcoin dominance, right? Again, it sounds like insanity probably to most investors, but if you consider the size of Ethereum and the price estimations that we're looking for if Ethereum makes a breakout, adding another 10% of market dominance for altcoins is actually quite simple. It's unlike Avalanche or Solana or all these other layer ones or metaverse projects, right? They could double, triple, 10X, 50X, but it doesn't really put a dent in overall market dominance, right? At least not to the degree if Ethereum was to do a two or three X because of its size, right? 
we can see that we've already been playing out here. And in fact, what we've got generally is what's known as an ascending triangle here. You've got consistent resistance, you've got your higher lows, price pressing up against that range, ready to set the foundation to pop up higher here. The momentum is incredibly strong, and most of this metric is being driven by Ethereum. You can see that here by taking a look at ETH dominance. This is a chart we've had, for example, from back since October of 2020 here. Excuse me, sorry, my apologies, 2021. I mistyped that there. But in October of 2021, back a couple months ago, we had this idea that Ethereum was gonna break out of this channel, and it looks like we're pretty much on pace for that, right? We've been seeing Ethereum continue to gain here, even with these minor pullbacks here. It's been making generally higher lows and higher highs against Bitcoin here, and the sense of not only its ratio, but also here in dominance. And we've gone from around 7% market dominance up here to more than 3x that, around 22%. And now it looks like we're heading up here by the end of the year towards probably around 25% market dominance. And we can continue to climb even higher up here towards around 30%. Now you can start to see here why, you know, that's an 8% market dominance gain from where we are now, how we could easily reach up to this range here. And then I think during that time period, you'll also see other altcoins, excluding Ethereum, starting to take some of that market share, maybe possibly coming up here towards the higher band here of the general resistance range that takes in the highs of January 2018 and the recent highs from back here in May and August, right? So that kind of gets us to that metric there where we can start to see around 70% here within the next coming weeks and months. So that's again what I wanna propose here. There's a lot of signs here that generally showcase that the risk on narrative, whether it's prevalent or not in dollar pairs, is going on right now. Smart money is starting to use this opportunity, any dip in the market, to reallocate into more high growth assets. Ethereum being one of those. And I gotta say, to be honest with you all, even though there are a lot of exciting altcoin opportunities, we've got our exposure towards a variety of altcoin plays, it's gonna be difficult to outpace Ethereum in this cycle. You've really gotta have your winners. You're really gonna have those that are gonna be able to outpace Ethereum because Ethereum's got a lot of fuel to the fire, not just in the sense of the fundamentals, but due to the sheer supply and demand economics with E2.0 staking, setting aside a lot of the supply uh, for validation and earning staking rewards, which will mean less people are gonna be selling their underlying staked ETH. You've got as well, uh, for example, EIP-1559, and along with that as well, all the fundamental developments going on that are gonna set even more demand for Ethereum in the long run. It's gonna be difficult to have a monetary policy that competes with Ethereum, which is going to become deflationary, if you can believe it, by the time the merge comes through. That's absolutely insane. With the demand side economics of Ethereum, and the supply side schedule, which is becoming deflationary. Well, as people say in crypto, and I, I get tired of the meme sometimes, number go up, right? Value is gonna probably gonna go up, right? And it's gonna probably outpace Bitcoin. And we can start to see a lot of market dominance get dragged to Ethereum. Now, will it give up a lot of it in the future? For sure. But there's a trade opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to be able to outpace Bitcoin in a relatively predictable play. It's not some small cap coin. It's not too speculative. And that's what I'm here about here on the channel, guys. Yeah, I'm not going to promote to you guys the next 100x altcoin. But what I am going to tell you guys about is some really solid opportunities to not mess up and not miss out in this cycle. To still be able to outpace Bitcoin, which is already doing phenomenally well against other assets in the world. But get those two, three, five, and potentially 10x opportunities where we can do good against Bitcoin and Ethereum. All right. So anyways, I wanna go ahead and dive into some really exciting news. One of the projects that we've talked about here on the channel that I really like on a fundamental spaces is Energy. It's another layer one protocol in the crypto space. It's very heavily focused on community adoption, fundamental development, DeFi, and even tapping into the NFT space as a recent, but is highly focused on building a blockchain that's accessible for all participants and not badgered down by network fees. It's probably one of the biggest arguments against Ethereum at the moment is the network fees and the congestion. But there's a lot Lot of exciting developments going on in energy as we've talked about them here on the channel many times not only the fact that in their recent referral program they've doubled the rewards here for the energy swap referral program 
So for those of you who are familiar with it on energy swap, uh, you could refer people on chains, first of its kind in history, where you can actually refer people on uh, energy swap, the native automated market maker or decentralized exchange on energy, and be able to earn swap fees that people would generally pay into the protocol. But now they've doubled the stakes here. So for anyone that you refer, you'll actually get twice the amount of referral fees you would have originally gotten before. So if you guys wanna dive into some of the in-depth details on how you can participate in the referral program, there's a, a definitely some resources on that within the Medium article, but it's really simple. All you gotta do, it's basically come over to energy swap here and not only I would just say get a good look at the, the metrics here, try out energy swap, but you can actually set up once you've connected uh, your wallet, like a MetaMask wallet to energy, uh, the energy blockchain, you'll be able to actually set up an affiliate link through the energy swap platform. So from there, you'll be able to share it with friends, be able to get lifetime referral income as long as they're trading on the platform. And we can see that there's been a lot of traction here on chain. If we take a look here on the weekly trend, right? A really solid uptrend here in overall weekly volume with for, but basically over the past four weeks here, maintaining over $10 million in volume each and every week with still a nice consistent growth trend. And we're currently in the mid part of the week here, already seeing about $7 million of volume. And this has come not only due to the fact that energy swap is seeing a whole range of adoption here, but we're also seeing increased liquidity here in the sense of the market pairs. Right? Energy having some liquid pairs with core coins like DAI and ETH that have been bridged over, but also the ability to trade between Energy and Solana, Doge, a lot of other layer one and layer two plays that you generally even couldn't trade on Ethereum. And this is one of the big selling points in my opinion as to why I love Energy Swap, the range of different tokens that you can trade. It's as if you're trading on an exchange in the sense of the fees you're paying, but you're paying even less, and you also have access towards a wide, wider range of to uh, tokens out there in the market with practice practically no gas fees. It's an absolutely exciting experience here that I think is, again, something you should take a look into and give it a test at if you're tired of paying the high network fees and you're looking for potential alternative layer ones or layer twos to engage in trading or swapping activity. Now, another big thing that I want to dive into here within the article outside of the yield farming is the referral contest. So for those of you who, for example, have wanted to engage in the referral campaign, there's also a way to be eligible here as well for the referral contest rewards here that Energy has recently launched. Again, this is still part of the program they talked about back in November, where you'll be able to actually not only get the lifetime rewards from people you refer to the protocol, but outside of that, you'll be able to enter in for a chance to win over $21,000 worth of prizes. So some really exciting stuff here. Again, it pays to be someone to engage early on in one of these protocols and find them early on before they really start to go under market traction. So again, I can't emphasize enough, guys. This is one of many great opportunities here that you can engage in. But one of the big things I actually want to show you guys, which which again, is a new space to me, to be completely frank. But I think it's gonna be one that, as of now, we can no longer deny is gonna be part of the crypto space, and energy is not missing out on it. It's the trend with NFTs or non-fungible tokens. And I wanted to share a little bit of a sneak peek here of some of the work that energy is putting out right now. They're working on a collection of NFT dragons for the energy blockchain. And I think the design on this is really cool. Uh, there's been a lot of things like, you know, there's, there's a lot of kind of like the um, kind of JPEG styled NFTs and stuff out there that are some form of collectibles. And some of them are cool, but I gotta be honest, like I'm a big like kind of mythological guy. I used to at least play a lot of card games and stuff when I was younger and stuff. So to have like these dragon NFTs be really, really cool for the energy blockchain. So this is a quick sneak peek here, but if you guys are interested in joining the whitelist here to be able to get some of these early on, or maybe potentially participate, there's a whitelist program launching very soon in the Energy Discord. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll leave a link down below in the description where you guys can learn more about that. Uh, and if you haven't already, not only join the Discord, but also give Tommy Will Power a follow. He's the founder of Energy, he puts out a lot of really awesome content, everything in relation to energy, but also some really good macro analysis on Twitter. So. Again, very much worth following on Twitter. I've been following them for some time over the past couple of years as I've been following the Energy Project. But there's a lot of exciting developments going on here for Energy as a blockchain. And I think the biggest one here is the wide range of services that Energy is providing, the ecosystem it's building, but not only providing all of these features and services, but focusing heavily on security. This is a huge, huge element, guys, because it's one thing for all these networks out there that might be able to provide lower gas fees and may be able to provide these services, right? That's great you know, for users who need those things. 
But probably the biggest issue that doesn't get talked about enough is the lack of security in the crypto space, which Energy does a great job of compensating for by having energy defense, having an active community of moderators and admins who can help to resolve any type of criminal or a theft cases within the crypto space. You know, for example, you go out and participate in an average DeFi protocol or newly launched protocol in the Ethereum community, there's a bug in the smart contract, or for example, someone uh, through a malicious website steals your private key or recovery phrase, your funds are gone. There, there's no other way to put it. And the unfortunate reality of it is that there are no ramifications on these other networks. On energy though, that's a different story. Tommy and I were chatting back in a previous interview and he said something along the lines of around 90 to 95% of any of these cases gets resolved. And people don't even come to the energy blockchain anymore because they know that they're not gonna be able to steal funds from the network like they can on other layer ones. So I highly recommend here diving in, getting your feet wet, trying out the energy ecosystem. There's some really great tutorials and also medium articles that you can dive into that will show you how to actually set up a wallet or energy wallet through MetaMask, be able to connect to the energy network and to be able to interact with the ecosystem. You will need some energy to do that. So there are a couple of different exchanges where you can buy some if you want to give it a spend or if you reach out to the energy community, there's probably some ways, uh, for example, to the rain, uh, raindrop program and stuff they have in their discord where you can start to get some access or exposure towards a little bit of energy, which is really all you'll need to start engaging within the ecosystem. But if you guys want to dive further into it, dive into staking around energy, there's all kinds of stuff. The best website to go to is energy.world. It's the official website where you can learn more about energy. But that being said, everyone, I want to thank you all for watching today's video. I hope you'll give energy a shot and check them out. But if you like this video, consider dropping a like, consider subscribing, and let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on what we talked about today in regards to Ethereum whether or not we could see a 2x multiple against Bitcoin and growth and dominance potential flipping in this cycle for Ethereum against Bitcoin and also what are your thoughts on energy. But that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care everyone.